สวัสดีครับขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่รายการคุยให้สว่างทางช่อง JKN CNBC ผมมาดัมแบรดชอผู้ดำเนินรายการในวันนี้นะครับ uh, Welcome to the CNBC conversation I'm your host Adam Bradshaw. We are joined by a very special guest. She's a force for good, an eco-friendly designer, and a Filipino American representing beauty and intelligence on a global stage. Please welcome Arbani Nola Gabriel, Miss Universe 2022. It's a pleasure to have you today. Thanks for coming to Thailand. Well, Have you been here for you. a while? Well, I arrived a couple of days ago, but this is my first interview on this trip, so I'm well, really excited I, about that. I heard that the the channel actually had the opportunity to interview you when you first got the crown. Yes, and first in January when I won, January 14th, and then my first trip to Bangkok was in February, and I interviewed here as well. Sweet, and so <laughs> it's been six months then. Six months, four months, not quite six months yet, but about four months. Oh, it's been four months. Yes. Okay, and I hear that that you're on the halfway point as uh, as Miss Universe, right? I am nearing the halfway point. I will be giving up my crown around November or December time. Okay, so mm -hmm. so far for the last four months, what are some of the highlights? of being Miss Universe? Wow, there are so many things. Uh, there's so much to say. I just came in from Manila, Philippines, and my father is from the Philippines, so that was my first time going back to the Philippines after I won Miss Universe. And I grew up going there as a child, but it was so different this time because I was Miss Universe, and everybody was so warm and inviting, and it was so great to be able to connect with my Filipino roots mm -hmm. and just share that joy with everybody, because Filipinos love pageants just like Thailand as well. Did you get recognized all over the place? Yes, I did. I mean, sometimes it wouldn't happen. I went to the Mall of Asia and it was actually pretty low key, but everywhere I went, people would want photos and we would take selfies together. And I just love all the excitement and how the fans really pour themselves into pageantry. Like I said, just like in Thailand as well. It's so fun to be Miss Universe over here. I bet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so w what were some of the places you went in the Philippines? Manila and any, any other places? Mostly Manila. I was there for the Miss Universe Philippines pageant, so I was lucky enough to judge that. So mostly I was in the hotel and in Manila, but one special trip we did was go to my father's home street where he grew up, and that was in Malate, that's Smith Street. So I visited there. We had a big celebration, and my parents actually flew in from Texas as well. So I was able to celebrate with the community and my family. Cool. Do you speak any of the Tagalog. local language? Is it Tagalog? Tagalog. You know what? I know a little bit. I say what I know, but I just started with the teacher. So we're about eight, six or eight uh, interview lessons in because nice. it's my dream to be fluent. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. So how do you say just something simple like hello or something like that? Hello is kumusta, like hello, how are you? Or kumusta po, that's a formal way to say that. That's cool. <laughs> yes. So um, over the last four months, what are some of the missions that you feel like you've accomplished um, as Miss Universe? Well, there's so many things, but uh, my main mission and what's personal to me is sustainable fashion. I've been a fashion designer half my life now, and there's a lot of room to make the industry more sustainable. When you look at all the textiles that are used when you're making a garment, there's a lot of waste that garments produce. So I take the waste and I actually make new pieces from it, and I'm able to raise awareness uh, at the raise awareness about that. So actually when I was in Bangkok last, they gave me an opportunity to go to a university and speak on sustainability. And I think this trip as well, I'll be able to speak the, to the young generations of designers and go to another university and continue to spread that message because I think a lot of people don't know too much about how we can make the industry more eco-friendly. So what are some of the ways we can make it more eco-friendly uh, with the fashion industry? Yes, yeah, so we actually consume about 400% more clothing than we did 20 decades ago. So even people learning that number, they have the same yeah, expression. Yeah, it's like, wow. So when you have that conscious, you can make uh, different decisions, whether you're shopping secondhand or I like to swap clothing out with my friends all the time, or there's a lot of rental companies where you can rent clothing. And that really just stops from buying new all the time and consuming more clothes. So that's something easy people can do. Yeah, secondhand 
kind of stuff. Yes. Do you take older stuff and make it into newer stuff? Does Is that a thing as well? I'm all about that. Recently, I went into the Miss Universe closet. I was telling you earlier about my apartment, and there was leftover clothes from previous queens, and some of them just didn't fit me right, so I actually cut them up and altered them and made them into new clothing. So instead of just taking those and throwing those in the trash or giving those away, I was able to give them a new life. I make videos about it, and I'm able to share it with everybody, and everybody gets really excited, but it's a fun way to raise awareness. That's awesome. Um, one thing that a lot of people have wondered is before you were Miss Universe, you probably had some expectations of how it might feel to become Miss Universe. And so a lot of people want to know, after you became Miss Universe and you got the crown, mm -hmm. was it different from what you imagined or was it similar? Or has your per perspective on it changed at all? You know, I definitely thought when I first won, I would feel on top of the world all the time because I'm Miss Universe and that's so exciting. But you're under a lot of pressure and you, you don't sleep a lot sometimes. So there are definitely days when I don't feel 100% or if I can deliver great in an interview, but you just have to push through that. I always thought I would have that 100% confidence because I'm Miss Universe. But, you know, just like anybody else, there's days when I just don't feel my best. And mm -hmm. that was definitely a surprise for me yeah I bet uh, we all have <laughs> sleep problems uh, you know definitely. I mean, it, it's tough um, do you have anything special planned for the next six months any any uh, missions that you'd like to accomplish well when I get back to New York after this trip I'll be going back to New York for just a few days and then I'm going to Guatemala for the first time on behalf of Smile Train which is the world's largest cleft face organization and they perform cleft surgeries to those in need and it's free and affordable so I'll go and speak on behalf in Guatemala raise awareness for the organization because Miss Universe has partnered with that organization for so many years mm -hmm. and I'll be able to spend time with some of the patients post-op a lot of the patients are children so I'm able to come in bring joy to the children I always bring candy and I'll bring something special from America as well so that's next on the horizons there's so many other things but that's next right now and then June I think I'll be in New York and I'm able to get involved more there and I'm working on a sustainable fashion collection as well sweet mm -hmm. that sounds like you've got a lot going on that's awesome <laughs> um, a lot of people were wondering um, about your childhood and, and what was your upbringing like you you mentioned that your father's Filipino what kind of influence did your father play in your life as a child? Well, I grew up in Texas, so my father is Filipino. My mom is a sweet lady from Beaumont, Texas, so that's a <laughs> smaller town. So if anything, I grew up with two different perspectives and two different family dynamics, and that really shaped me to be non-judgmental. I learned there's different family traditions, and because my da dad is from Manila, they loved bringing me there as a child, and I was able to see firsthand how my dad grew up so differently from me. And in America, I realized I'm so grateful and so blessed to have all these opportunities that my father didn't have so if anything it shaped my mind to always be welcoming of people and their traditions never judge people and just always have that grateful heart so I've been told that your father immigrated to the United States when when he was younger uh, during the was it World War II era well, he, he was a child in World War II. My dad's 85 years old. Oh, so. wow. But <laughs> <He> still was... <laughs> strong? Yes, he's very healthy. Thankfully, he's healthy and he's, mm -hmm. he's still kicking. He, he's got so much energy. But yeah, he was a child in World War II, and I remember him telling me that uh, he has very vague memories because he was such a, such a small kid, but he does remember sleeping with his shoes on. That's one story he, he's told me, and it's because they would always have to be ready to flee their home or wherever they are, always be ready at a moment's notice, which to me is so crazy to think about. So sleeping with your shoes <laughs> on, huh? Interesting. Yeah. So uh, how old was he when he came to America? He was age 19, so Nin he had a college scholarship at that point. Oh, so he ended up getting a scholarship as well. Yes, he was wow. very studious and was able to get a scholarship. I think the church he was involved in found an opportunity there, and from there he applied. He had really good grades, and he went to Washington and had his first scholarship. What role has he played <laughs> for you as uh, you know, a supporter of you throughout this whole process? 
Well, my dad has showed me and he's taught me actually that you don't need to be the smartest person in the room to make the best grades. You just have <laughs> to work the hardest. So I was able to apply that through life and especially through pageantry. When I first joined and started training for Miss Texas and Miss USA and Miss Universe, I didn't feel the most qualified at times or have the most experience, but that mindset of just working harder than anybody else and you can make the best grade or mm -hmm. win the crown really applied to that situation. And I would always keep that in mind. And also, my dad is so goofy. <laughs> and at times that I would get stressed, he would come over back in Houston and he would just ease my mind and do something silly or fall asleep on my couch and I would take pictures of him <laughs> in funny, crazy sleeping positions. So he's just brought me so much joy over the years. So they were telling me that he actually showed up in America with like $20? Yes. Right? <laughs> $20. He, he was like, well, he didn't have too much money. He had the college scholarship. So he said, if I can just get to America, they will welcome me with the room and board in college. But he didn't need much. So that's all he really had. But then ended up getting a scholarship. Yes, he already had the scholarship. Oh, he did. Okay. Yes, he already he already had the ride over. Oh, okay, so that's okay. why twenty dollars worked for him because as soon as he got to America, he was able to check in to the college and have the room and board paid what, for. As was well. it Texas that he that he went to? No, his, uh, he went to Washington. Oh, you said that. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that's that's awesome. So, what are some some life lessons you've learned from your father over the years? Well, I have a distinct memory of when I was a child. I wanted to to build a play place. Sorry, not build a play place. I saw a play place in a catalog mm -hmm. and I said, Dad, can we have this? And he said, it's too expensive, but we can build it ourselves. So he actually drew the layout and we went to Home Depot, which is a home improvement store and yeah, they had in hardware. In Thailand, we have Home Pro. Yeah, home so Pro. Okay. Home Pro is, is in Thailand, but Home Depot, yeah. So okay. you went to Home Depot, picked up some supplies S and? Some wood, cement, everything, all the tools. And he gathered some of his friends and we built it from the ground up. So he showed me if you don't have the means or the financial means to achieve what you want, you can do it yourself. You just always find a way and use the resources you have. Oh, that's awesome. Sounds like a great <laughs> dad. Well, all right, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with the CNBC Conversation and Miss Universe 2022. Welcome back to the CNBC Conversation. We're still with Arbany, Miss Universe 2022. And we've been talking about a variety of topics and we're glad to still be able to pick her brain a little bit about how Miss Universe has changed her life. Um, we were talking about your father a little bit and how he's inspired you throughout this whole process. And would you call him maybe your biggest fan? I would definitely say so. Mom and dad have been there since day one. They're front row every single time they can be. So I'm, I'm grateful for their support. I really am. So what role has your mother played in this whole process? So it's so funny. Dad gets all the credit. Cameras love him. He's very <laughs> charming and outgoing, but my mom is a little bit more reserved. So people don't ask as much, but she actually is, I mean, she's my core. She's my rock. And throughout this journey, when I was training for Miss Universe, she did so much while my dad would sleep on the couch, as I mentioned. <laughs> so she, anywhere from running errands for me, taking my clothes to the tailor. On Sundays, we would do Sunday sewing because mm -hmm. I'm a designer. I would be designing my pieces for the competition and she would come and help me so she would always keep me grounded as well she's just the sweetest kindest woman she's an angel so she would always calm me down whenever I'm stressed out and she just knows how to handle any and everything she's just super pageant mom just all the errands <laughs> getting the makeup anything there's just so much to do I feel bad because I keep her so busy but she loves it <laughs> so do you, do you have any siblings I have I have three older brothers, so I'm the youngest and only oh. girl. Yes, I have a brother that's two years older than me. His name's Remy. We grew up together, and then I have a half brother on my mom's side, as well as a half brother on my dad's side. And what kind of family activities did you guys? 
partake in uh, throughout your childhood? Family vacation was everything in the summertime. We would at least go to one place, and I'm from the States, so we, there we go to California where my brother was living, or we really liked amusement parks, so <laughs> roller coaster rides. Go to like Six Flags? And Six Flags, yes, you know. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> amusement parks, what else? We would do road trips. Uh, we really like going to the beach, anywhere tropical. We would go to Hawaii a lot as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. And did your brothers um, support you throughout this process as well? They definitely did. You know, they saw the journey firsthand and they were so excited when I won my state, Miss Texas. They were all there. And then three months later, Miss USA, and it just got even more exciting. And then I, at that point, my brother became an expert on buying the makeup that I needed and running errands too. And so he knows what color shade of foundation I need. It's so funny. He's well, your like brothers super, do. Yeah, he's, they're super <laughs> brothers at this point. They've learned so much. There's, just, there's so much behind the scenes like beauty tricks that we do that take a long time and they've actually helped me with that as well. Are there any words of encouragement that you can remember uh, in particular that you got from either your mom, your dad, or your brothers that really inspired you? Uh, well, I would say my youngest brother, he, he always believed in me no matter what. And when I was feeling a little less motivated or down, he would always remind me that I could do it and that I have the work ethic to do it. So he would, that was my, my youngest brother, or the one I'm closest to in mm -hmm. age. And then my oldest brother, he's kind of more the financial geek. So when I won Miss USA, he told me to be smart with my money and you know put it away and just think of longevity of my career. So he's always coaching me in mental me in that way. Saying not to buy stuff that you don't need, right? <laughs> yes, to be smart, you know, keep the circle small. He's very protective. No purses, no cars, that kind of Which thing. Which I haven't, actually. Yeah. So <laughs> He's smart to tell you yeah. that. So, um, as Miss Universe, you've, you know, you're busy all the time. You have all these missions that you're trying to accomplish. You probably have less time to spend with your family, am I right? Definitely, yes. How have you dealt with that? Well, um, honestly, this year is so fast-paced. Sometimes I feel like you just go, go, go. And I think because I'm Miss Universe for only one year, this is such, such a special time to put my all into Miss Universe. I mean, it's a job at the end of the day, and my family understands. So we're always just FaceTiming. We'll be in Facebook, uh, excuse me, FaceTime groups, and that's okay. the way we, we stay connected. They're just a phone call away, but they respect the duty of the job, and they know I just want to squeeze every ounce of opportunity out of this year so they're understanding so, um so right now your brothers are back in the states and Correct. your parents as well or did your dad join you on this trip or my dad and mom met me in manila philippines okay. when i was there last week and i think they're going to the islands now to relax <laughs> and then yeah my my other brothers are in the states and okay. i'm in based in new york for the year in the world of a public figure you know, whether you're a big celebrity, you're an actor, you're an actress, you're a singer, or Miss Universe, social media can be kind of, you know, there's pros and cons. There's, there's good things and bad things. Sometimes you get admired and sometimes you might get some criticism. Definitely. Have you had to face any harsh criticism uh, throughout this process? Yes, so I think that comes with the territory. Miss Universe kind of goes through that because it's like a sport. So when your country wins, the fans are excited, but the countries that don't win, you know, they're upset about it and in comes the criticism and the negative comments on social media but I just remind myself it's kind of all a part of the role especially when you have this big opportunity to be Miss Universe people say whatever they want whether it's good or bad but I really try not to put too much value into that I tell people you cannot let other people define who you are you can't let people let you know or make dictate how you feel about yourself so those comments they can be very hurtful but I actually just w learned a way to block the negative comments there's an app called body bodyguard and they are blocking negative comments so I don't even have to look at them half the time which is great well the thing is like you'll get like 99 comments that are great and then right. one that's terrible right. and you'll think about <laughs> that one comment all mm -hmm. day and so it's it's probably 
uh, good that you can block those as well and not have to see them at all. Right, and I tell people um, that the comments will never go away. There's always somebody that will have something to say about you no matter what. If my hair doesn't look good that day or what I'm wearing isn't right, and you just have to give yourself grace. I think uh, the more successful you become, the more people want to say things about you. So I think if anything, just take that as you doing something big and grand in life and putting yourself out there. Yeah, sometimes they say that uh, negative comments say more about the commenter than who they're commenting about. Right. right? <laughs> they might be going through some problems. Yeah. And you, as as someone that has so much influence, you know, you you definitely don't want to clap back or anything. You can just ignore it and be a good example it's to everybody. It's tempting sometimes, but yes, you just gotta <laughs> ignore it and move on. <laughs> so you never have clap back. Huh? <laughs> clap back. I love this, love this lingo, no. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Well, it sounds like you've got some experience ignoring cyber bullies. Do you have any advice for uh, social media creators out there that might have problems with this? Well, I think the number one easy tool is to block when you see somebody leaving hate comments or giving you messages that are bringing you down. You can easily block them so they don't have access to you. But I think it's a really cool time in social media right now because we're gravitating towards imperfections. When you look at TikToks and videos mm. and the comedians, and there's a lot of people that are really being celebrated for their personality and who they are instead of those picture perfect moments. So if anything, I, I would tell the next generation or anybody that's on social media, you really just wanna play into your uniqueness and try not to be so perfect all the time. And when you can celebrate that, I think people are finding more confidence and just being themselves and I think that's really awesome. Oh I love that just be yourself that's the best way to, to go for sure. Let's get back to your trip you, you said you went to Manila and a couple other places in the Philippines. Um, what about here in Thailand where have you been so far? <laughs> So on this trip, actually, yesterday was a leisure day, so I went to a plaza. I cannot re remember the name, but we went fabric shopping because I love to gather fabrics when I'm traveling, like local textiles, and take them home and make designs from them. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and then I tried some of the best pad thai I've ever had in my life. Oh, really? Yes. So what, what, what was so great about it? <laughs> uh, you know, the noodles were smaller than I've ever had. Usually I have the thicker, flat noodles uh -huh. and I'm sorry I don't know the name of it but these were nice and light and really skinny and then it came with shrimp okay. and the peanuts on top were amazing and then you put the chili flakes <laughs> it was great and it was on top of a banana leaf I don't have that all the time we don't do that in America do, so. do you eat Thai food at all in America Yes, but I think it's an Americanized version. So I get yellow curry a lot. There's potatoes, <laughs> carrots, pineapple in it. Yeah, it's different yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's but, definitely different. So you you have had pad thai in America before? Yes, that is. Americans love pad thai. So. Okay. Yeah, that's a big thing, right? But yeah. then you tried it here and you, you think it was much better? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> what are some other dishes you, you've tried? I have tried khao soy. It's been a while, but mm -hmm. when I traveled up north, I was uh, backpacking through Chiang Mai and Pai. That's when I was introduced to khao soy and it was so lovely. What Did you have the, uh, it with chicken or beef? Do you remember? I probably had the vegetarian version because I don't oh, okay. eat chicken or beef, which makes it a little difficult when I'm traveling, but I think they just took the meat out for me. Oh, maybe or some maybe. tofu? <laughs> tofu, yes. <laughs> or maybe they didn't know. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know. <laughs> do, do you like spicy food at all? I like Americans' version of spicy. <laughs> so not spicy? <laughs> uh, thai spicy is a little bit intense for me. If I have the Thai spicy, I end up just having to drink water the whole time. I feel like I can't enjoy the food. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it can be intense sometimes. Sometimes Thai people will say it's not that spicy, and by that they mean it's very spicy. <laughs> I know what that means by now. I know that I always say just a little bit or even no spicy. <laughs> so do you have plans to go anywhere else while you're here in Thailand? So this trip I'm here about eight days I think and it's mostly to work with the JKN group and the Miss Universe group we're doing interviews I think we have two days of photo shoots as well as a university visit where I get to speak on sustainability and fashion and there's a charity aspect with the hotel that I'm staying at the Sheridan in Bangkok the Riverside one and they have leftover food a lot from the day and they actually the chef will go through the food make sure it's healthy and then they will deliver and distribute that instead of throwing that away so I'm gonna partner with them in a few days to do that 
That'll be awesome. Yeah, but it's all in Bangkok this time. Okay. Well, you got to come back. There's <laughs> yes. so many great places to to visit in Thailand, especially the south. If you you want to hit up the beaches, you you mentioned you love the beach. Yes, I have actually been to Koh Tao. I did the oh, diving okay. there all for right. the first time ever. That was such a great experience. And I went to the full moon party when I was probably like 22 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that was yeah. a blast. <laughs> it was a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with uh, Miss Universe 2022 uh, here on the CNBC Conversation. Welcome back to the CNBC Conversation. We're still with Arbany, Miss Universe 2022. And the first question actually for this break will come from me. This is just something I want to know personally is as Miss Universe, you have to smile so much all the time, right? Do you ever get you know, sore in your cheeks <laughs> from Absolutely. smiling so much. <laughs> Luckily, I smile a lot naturally, but there's times when we're taking a lot of photos and the cheeks definitely hurt. So I will just massage them when I get the chance or <laughs> okay. like uh, massage my lips as well. But you kind of just have to do it. It definitely hurts. But beauty's pain. I'm always in pain one way or another, whether it's my hair is too <laughs> tight or my feet hurt. It's one or the other. Something's painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's get into your, your clothing brand. Uh, you have an eco-friendly clothing brand that is focused on sustainability. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit uh, more about that. Well, the name is Arbany Nola, which is my first and middle name. And when I graduated college in 2018, that's when I started selling clothing that I would hand make. And I would do custom orders. And that's kind of the birth of my brand. And I, it was a small, it is a small business. I run it all myself. Um, one of my best sellers is my t-shirts that say, if not now, then when, my oh, okay. favorite quote. And it's just to be motivational for whoever wears it. But the point is to spread eco-friendly fashion and really educate people, but make it really easy. So everything that people are buying is environmentally friendly. It's cute, it's fabulous, but they don't have to really think about that. And after I won Miss Universe, I sold out of everything on my website and I'm out of stock on everything. And I've definitely been really busy as Miss Universe, so I'm not able to work on it as much, but definitely going to continue building that after my year is done. Yeah, so how, what do you see, or what role do you see yourself playing in the sustainable fashion industry in the future? The dream and goal is to be a leading voice in the sustainable fashion industry, continue to make it the new normal, and continue to push brands as well as my brand to practice environmentally friendly techniques within the garment process. So there, that's anything from factories taking the scraps and donating them to other designers so they're using it. I really want to cut down on the pollution in the industry because if you think about it, we all wear clothing. There's so much that's produced a day, but there's a lot of textile waste. So there's a lot of opportunity to use that waste. I was actually just meeting with Smiley Factory that was in Manila, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of textile waste. He was telling me about a new technique where they use that waste and turn it into energy to produce for the garment factories. So if that is something that becomes the new normal, that would be great. That's awesome. So, and you also mentioned uh, secondhand clothing and turning it into new clothing. Yes. Is that part of the, the business plan at all? Yes, that's something I do now in my studio in New York. I'll take secondhand clothing and recycle it, or we call it upcycle, and okay. make it into a new garment. And I think secondhand clothing is actually growing, especially with the younger generation, because thrifting and vintage stores is becoming really trendy. You can buy, find unique pieces, and they have really great quality quality and you can give them a new life again. So promoting that as well and using that as my fabrics and techniques in my clothing uh, in my designs is something that I continue to tell people is like something you can do to make it easy and integrate into your lifestyle. Cool. So what are some uh, eco-friendly habits that we can all um, try and have in our everyday lives that, that you actually practice? 
I would say something really simple, maybe like when your zipper breaks or you have a hole in your pants. Most people say, okay, I'm done with this garment. It's broken. I can't use it anymore, but you can just take it to a tailor. I think some people forget there's tailors everywhere and they can fix that up for you. Or if you get a new piece and you don't think that you look that great in it, I always take my pieces to tailors and they fit my body much better. And it's really just getting that longevity out of a garment instead of just using it once or twice and then throwing it away. Because I think one of the problems is the overconsumption of just wearing something once, twice, and then getting rid of it. And then we're moving through clothing so fast. So if we can slow that down a little bit, that's one thing people can do. Yeah, I, I wish you would talk to my wife about that because <laughs> I, I feel like she wears something once and then, eh, no. Anyway, <laughs> we'll change the subject there. No, yeah, yeah. Um. I, I, wear, I wear things once and then I give them away or I swap with my friends. I wear a lot of clothing too. I, I don't, sometimes three outfits a day, so. It's, it's normal, but like I said, you just want to be more conscious of that. Well, and yeah, and then you can you <laughs> give it to your friends or exactly. yeah, or take some of your friend's stuff or make it into something new like you're doing. That's awesome. Yes. What, what's a story that you could share with us of someone that's benefited from your advocacy in this, uh, in the, fa the sustainable fashion industry? Well, actually, before I won Miss Universe, I was working at a nonprofit organization in my hometown of Houston, Texas, and it was called Magpies and Peacocks. And mm -hmm. it was a, or it still is, a sustainable fashion house where people would donate fabrics from Houston that they no longer wanted, and we would make them into new garments. And within that nonprofit, I would teach sewing classes to women that survive from domestic violence and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of re a rehabilitation program to get these women back on their feet. And uh, one of the last women that I taught before I won, she wanted to go back to her life of prostitution. But it was a very unique story where we were able to come together through sewing and me teaching her sewing. It really turned into this friendship and relationship where I was giving her words of encouragement and reframing her mind so she could realize that she didn't have to go back to her life. I was giving her tools and the knowledge to learn a new skill and find a new passion. And that was the beauty of that. You know, teaching somebody how to sew or just making them realize that education really equals empowerment when you learn something new. and. Mm. When you are teaching somebody face-to-face -face a new skill, you're building that relationship. And I was really able to save her from going back to her previous life. That's great. So what, what kind of legacy do you hope to leave behind as Miss Universe, in particular about the eco-friendly design? aspect of your work? Well, I think I'm the first Miss Universe that's, a, that's talking about sustainable fashion so much because I am a designer. So I really hope that it changes the fashion industry and it really shows people that they can be more conscious. And it's actually very easy to make simple changes that we've talked about, especially in the beauty pageant world. I mean, there's so many clothes that we have to wear every single day, but we just need to be conscious of not throwing them away and not be wasteful. So you mentioned your best-selling t-shirt says, if not now, then when? then when, right? You got it. So if not now, then when? How can we apply that to right now for the world right now? If not now, then when? What, what should we be thinking about doing now and, and not later? I think anybody can ask themselves that question anytime, any day. I think we all have things that we want to do in five years, like, oh, I want to go live in Thailand later on in <laughs> life, or I want to get a new job, or I'm going to ask for a raise one day, or I'm going to take time off to go on that vacation one day, one day. And that one day turns into five years from now, 10 years from now. And I think we should always act with the sense of urgency. I mean, life is very short, and if you have have that mindset of saying, if not now, then when? Today's the day I'm going to do it. Today's the day I will rise to that challenge or face my fear. Then you will accomplish so much more in life and you can just act fearlessly. Yeah, I have about 10 things on my to-do <laughs> list, on my bucket list that I'm like, if not now, then when? Yes. And it never happens, you know? So, okay. You can do I'll it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're going to change modes just a little bit and we're going to have a what we call a quick fire challenge. Ooh. We're going to ask you, uh, to choose between two words and we'll start and just you, you hear the question and just answer as fast as you can. Okay. So we'll start with paper or plastic? Paper. All right. <laughs> solar energy or wind energy? Solar energy. 
Okay. Reducing, reusing, or recycling? Reducing and reusing, but really all three. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just all of them, right? Okay, you don't have to choose. Electric cars or public transportation? Public transportation. Okay. I say that because I live in New York and that's all we do. A lot of subway <laughs> yes. rides? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you mentioned that you don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. So here's the real question. Vegan or vegetarian? Vegetarian. <laughs> okay. So the real difference is you can still eat eggs and, and drink milk, right? Y yes. Okay. You got okay. it. <laughs> right. Planting trees or saving endangered species? That's tough, but saving endangered species. Okay. Education or health care? Education. That's oh. also a tough one. Poverty alleviation or gender equality? Gender equality. Okay. Local sourcing or fair trading? Mm, local sourcing. I would I would go there too. <laughs> Organic farming or urban gardening? Organic farming. Access to clean water or clean energy? Access to clean water. Reforestation or marine conservation? Marine conservation. I love the ocean. <laughs> Investing in green technology or environmental policy reformation? Environmental policy reformation. Promoting renewable energy or conserving natural resources? Wow, these are getting really good. <laughs> <laughs> mm, conserving natural resources. All right. Sustainable fashion or secondhand clothing? Oh my gosh, do I really need to pick one? Or are, are those <laughs> kind of the same thing? <laughs> you know, they are differ, there, but yeah. they, they go together. Um, sustainable fashion. All right. But both. I know I can't pick both, but... Empowering women or promoting youth leadership? Promoting youth leadership because it will empower them. Yeah, you're <laughs> right, because youth can be male or female, okay. Advocating for environmental justice or promoting sustainable urban development? Advocating for environmental justice. Sustainable tourism or protection of cultural heritage? Protection of cultural heritage. Access to quality education or combating climate change? Access to quality education. All it's right. A human right. <laughs> and the last one is promoting peace or fostering social justice? Fostering social justice. All right, so let's take a look at a few of your answers. A few of them were easy. Mm -hmm. Some of them took you a little bit of time to to decide. They started off easy. <laughs> yeah, so you chose paper over plastic. Right. Uh, that was pretty easy for you? Paper is a natural resource. <laughs> it will decompose. Plastic, not so much. Okay. Uh, you said reducing, reusing over recycling, but you wanted both kind of and felt like that was kind of the same thing? Both. The thought process there, if you reduce uh, consumption, then you never even have to get to recycling it because mm. you, you combat the problem in the early stage. There you go. Okay. Education, you kind of thought about this one, education or health care. Why did you choose education? I would say they're equally as important, but I had to choose one. And I think education really is the seeds for growth and people just living a life that is so much more open to opportunities. So if you educate people, that turns into empowerment and they might be more healthy and, in, in the long run anyway. Yes, from they're being equally as important on <laughs> healthcare as well. <laughs> I think this is the one you thought longest about, mm -hmm. and that's number eight, which is poverty alleviation or gender equality, and you chose gender equality. Yes, I mean, I just thought about the position I'm in now as mm -hmm. Miss Universe, and our number one mission is women empowerment and opening up opportunities for women, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, that I, like I said, that one as well is, they're both equally as important, yeah. but that's why I picked that yeah. one. They're both, I mean, you got to go for both of them there. Right. Obviously, we want to alleviate poverty as well. Correct. Okay, and then this was, I think this was an easy one, local sourcing or fair trading, and you chose local sourcing. Yes, I'm all about supporting local. I mean, that that's, you have to pump your dollar back into the economy where you live and help your communities. All right, and then... The one that we talked about a little bit was sustainable fashion or secondhand clothing. How, how do you think those are related? Can you have one without the other? 
I think you can have one without the other. You can have both. Um, in my case, when you look at my brand, I use secondhand clothing as my materials to make sustainable fashion. So that's why I thought, you know, they go hand in hand. Okay. <laughs> so circle both. <laughs> I liked your answer here, um, empowering women or promoting youth leadership. And you chose promoting youth e leadership because you felt like if you're promoting the youth, you're helping the youth, then you're going to empower women in the end as well. Yeah, promoting youth leadership, I think the, the next generation and focusing on youth is so important. And when you give them that confidence, it just naturally turns into empowerment. Okay, and then let's go to sustainable tourism or protection of cultural heritage. I felt like you didn't really have to think about that one. You were all about cultural heritage. Yeah, absolutely. I would say we have to pr protect uh, the history of our culture. I think that's so important. It made me think even today when I arrived at the hotel, there was a cultural dance that was that performed for me, and oh. I loved that. And being able to learn about places that I visit is just so enriching, not only for me, but everyone else. And I think we need to continue to carry on th the traditions because we learn from history. So was the traditional dance, was that where they kind of bend their hands back? Yes, and it was the monkey and the fish. Oh, okay. And I, I, yes, I can't remember the name, but... You'll see, if you, if you have a, a Thai woman put their hand out like so, like you look at mine, it's flat, but any Thai woman, they have been stretching their fingers out for so many years, but ah. so they get this curve when they dance. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I was mesmerized. I thought it was beautiful. I thought this, my hands can't do that. No, even my wife's hand. It, it's just, even if they're not a professional dancer, yeah. they've all been through it as children. Oh. And so they can bend their fingers back. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. But yeah. yeah, cultural heritage, which I think in the end will lead to tourism anyway. If we're, you know, um, exactly. sustaining uh, cultural heritages, people are going to want to come and see them. We cannot forget about history. So absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and having the CNBC conversation with us today. You did excellent. We are all inspired by your leadership over the last uh, four months as Miss Universe 2022 and looking forward to seeing what you do throughout the rest of your reign as Miss Universe. Well, thank you for having me on my first interview back in Bangkok. All right. We'd like to thank the audience for watching our CNBC conversation with Arbany, Miss Universe 2022. We look forward to watching her throughout her reign, and we'll see you next time right here on JKN CNBC. Have a good one.